Oh, hi, it's Zach Peter, your new favorite pop culture guru, serving you the hottest tea three times a week. From the latest news on The Real Housewives, deep dives into celebrity legal scandals, unfiltered convos with your favorite stars, and of course, the latest from Vanderpump Land, I've got you covered. And new episodes of the podcast are now available in video on Spotify. And they don't just let anybody do video, but this platinum blonde has won them over. So if you want the latest news from the ultimate tea spilling professional, tune in to No Filter with Zach Peter. That's No Filter with Zach Peter on your favorite podcast app now. Welcome to the Shotgun Story Worthy, the fast-paced game of truth, live! Please turn off your cell phones if you haven't already. And now, we invite you to sit back, relax, and enjoy the show. Here are your hosts, Christine Blackburn and Hannes Finney. Oh, there you have it. Welcome to Shotgun Story Worthy, the game show. My name is Christine Blackburn, and I'm here with... Hannes Finney, and we're coming to you from El Cid on Sunset Boulevard in Silver Lake, California. <laughs> Those of you around the world, the Germans, I know we have a big German country. When you come to L.A., come to El Cid, you'll see the authentic L.A. experience. Well, because it's a Spanish thing, isn't it? It's Spanish. It's very Spanish. And they actually have a new tapas menu. A new tapas menu. Yes. I can't get enough of I tapas. I believe it is pronounced tapas. Tapas. I pronounce it tapas because I'm from Wisconsin. You but guys. I, you, those of you here, try it. This stuff is awesome. I had one backstage. It's fantastic. Try it. It's okay. good. It's We're good. We're getting more compliments. We have people. Ah, it's good. All right, you guys, this is very exciting. We've been here to El Cid before to do the game show, and we're back tonight. Uh, we have got a lot going on. And I wanted to say this first, Hannes. Mm-hmm, yes. Uh, my daughter today, we were talking about my show tonight, and she knows this wheel, and she said to me, Mama, why don't you just let people talk about whatever they want to talk about? <laughs> oh, the youth. And I said... People are boring, young Alabama. Well, I said, Alabama, that's not, then that's not the game. And then you know what she says? She says, well, that's just my opinion. <laughs> yes, she is her mother's daughter. I know, right? All right, you guys, we're going to get right to it. We have, yeah, we're going to go right, it, right in here. We have 13 we're... storytellers tonight, plus one audience member. So one of you guys are able to play the game. So please, put your name on the story where the slip of truth on your table, you'll be put into the hat. And the, we'll lo- draw the lovely name. Sherry, my fiancé, will soon be collecting those from you. How long are you guys going to be engaged, by the way? I'm guessing about 14 years. Because it's been some time. It's been about a year and a half. No, it's been like two or three years on us. It's been a year and a you half. You were supposed to get married on 11, 11, 11. Now stop with that. That was Sherry's date. And whenever you make fun of it, it causes me trouble at home. All right, so you guys. So I need you to get behind the 11, 11, 11, which obviously didn't happen, so you can stop making fun so of it. So now when are you right? going to get married okay. now? No, no, we're going to marry 10, 11, 12. A 1, 1, 21. So that'll give me another, how many more years is that? <laughs> that I get to be like, no, seriously, honey, we don't want to cater pollo loco. All right, we want listen. some real food at All our right. wedding. You guys, for those of you, let, let me just get a round of applause. Who has not seen Shotgun Story Worthy before? Okay. Oh, quite a okay. few, quite a few. Fair enough, fair enough. Well, it's our game show. We have a podcast called Story Worthy, and this is an extension of the podcast, Shotgun Story Worthy. So we're going to yes. get started Everything right away. Everything in America is better with guns. That's I what know. I will say. It's true. Yes. Uh, we're going to get started right away. We're going to introduce you to the judges this evening, and they will go over the rules with you. So right now, please put your hands together for Carrie Armstrong of The Woo-hoo. Moth. Senior producer of The Moth, L.A. She's making her way through the crowd. Is the she making? The moth is very popular. Do you know this, Hannes? I do, I do, because uh, many people. Uh, it's not only popular in person; it's also on NPR. Right. NPR. That's like radio. Well, it's in like twenty-five. That's like real or, podcasting. It's like in twenty-five or twenty-seven cities too. I mean, it's everywhere now. Like they do live shows everywhere. All right, yeah. you guys. One more time for Carrie Armstrong. Carrie Armstrong coming up to the stage to explain the rules. All right, Carrie is going to explain the rules, and she's going to do this in one minute. Uh, we're going to start the story-worthy clock of truth. The clock of truth. And uh, you will find that a minute is much longer than you think. Plenty of time. Plenty of time to tell a good story. No okay. pressure. These, I'm going to get through these in a minute. No problem. And Take a little it? time. Take a little time. Okay, I'm going to slowly go through the rules. Go. You ready? Okay. 
Okay, these are the rules of Shotgun Story Worthy. Number one rule is no notes on stage, which I'm not I'm not following that rule. But I'm not, Neither not, are we, neither you're are we. You're not judging me. I'm a judge. You guys are screwed. No notes on stage, guys. Uh, next, the second one is you are going to spin that wheel, which is behind me. You're going to spin the wheel, and then you are not going to touch the wheel again. So stop, spin it, and stop. Don't touch the wheel. I'm shaking my finger vigorously That's for people exactly not watching right. you right I have now. had people just try to slow it down. Guys, you're slowing me it's down. Dangerous. You guys are slowing me down. Okay, when yeah. the wheel stops, say the name of the topic you landed on then wait for the shotgun sound to begin is that new the yeah, shotgun that's a, is it's new. a new thing okay. we is... have an actual shotgun sound can we hear that jorge i'm not that we're yeah okay <laughs> not that we were gonna mistake you that. know on sunset boulevard i just realized that's that could now it's got to be in here if it's okay, out guys, on the street where your car is parked seconds. that doesn't count Let 10 go. more seconds Sorry. okay if you go over time it is not automatic elimination but it is a factor in the judging so a factor in the one judging. minute yes. and then you Nobody is keeping time but yourself, so you need to keep an eye on that. And the judges are looking at time, story, and the ability to stay on topic. So that's it. Do it all, all in a minute. All right. Yes. Look at that. Thank See? you, Carrie Armstrong. All right, you guys. So to show you how this story works, we're going to bring up our other judge tonight, and that is comedian Jimmy Dore. Jimmy Dore! I, I have this in common with Jimmy Dore. I am the youngest of six. I think he's the youngest of 35. <laughs> but he's also from a big, a big family, I believe that. Uh, he is here. He is the star of several Comedy Central specials. He's also a writer and performer for the off-Broadway hit The Marijuana Logs. You were, were you ever in The Marijuana Logs? I could you, be. You're just trying to live the part. I could be. Your method. I'm yeah. living that dream. Mm. Uh, also, he hosts his own weekly radio show on Wednesdays on Radio KPFK 90.7 FM Los Angeles. And it's nearly three hours of free Jimmy Dore. I love that. Okay. Uh, Yeah, available every week via podcast. So we love that. Yes, we do. Mm -hmm. So Jimmy, let's have a round of applause for Jimmy. Thank you for coming, sir. How many people are in your family, man? I have 12 kids in my family. Wow. 12 kids. And uh, people always say, people love to say, they go, well, you learn a lot about life growing up in a big family. And I think the biggest thing I learned is I'm easily replaced. <laughs> yeah. I, I knew if I died, it wasn't going to put a big dent in their plans, you know? Oh, you know, Jimmy's so the, dead. What's are there, that? Are there pictures of you as a child? Uh, I, I'm sure there are. There's only four of me under the age of 10. Oh, really? Because I'm the youngest of six. And my mother, I always, you know, give her uh, grief about this. And one time, uh, about when I first moved to L.A., actually, 15 years ago, she sent me a picture in the mail, and it was a black and white photo of a little blonde girl on a tricycle. And on the back, there was a piece of masking tape, and it said, Christine, 1969. <laughs> so then I peeled back that masking tape, and it said... Lisa, 1962. <laughs> she like totally lied to me. Uh, well, <laughs> she tried. That's the important thing. She wanted to make you feel good. That's and what mothers sometimes do. lying is the best way to do that. I believe that's right. Get All right, you guys, we're going to have Jimmy spin the wheel. He's going to give us a little Okay, anecdote. so I'm going to spin the wheel. I've never played this game before. So, uh, so we say it together. Here we go. Let's go. lower expectations. Oh, school days. School days. Well, I went to... Oh, should I start? Wait, shotgun. <laughs> um, when I was in uh, college, how about when I was in college, which I went to uh, Illinois State University, and the way I picked Illinois Ooh. State was everybody in my neighborhood in Chicago would go to Northern Illinois University, but my best friend Mike DeMeo, he was going to Illinois State, and he had a car. So I was always a go-getter. That was the point. <laughs> Of that story, but uh, oh, so we're only we're only 25 seconds in. So at the, I know I feel rushed now. So the st- big story I could tell is that when we were freshmen, we decided to throw a big party. And we had to drill holes into the wall so we could hide the keg in the, <laughs> and then just had the thing coming through. And then when the RA came and knocked on the door, we just pushed the chair in front of it, and you couldn't see. And then we all had to chug, and so uh, that didn't work. <laughs> I thought that would work, but they still busted us. They go, uh, what's in the cups? And we're like, nothing, We drink. it's all empty. And then they just go in the room next door. They go, well, we're going in there. I guess someone had already tried that. And um, so that is my story. That's good. Yes. See, that worked out well. Oh, uh, one minute, four, 1. 1.4 4 seconds. Hole? Excellent. That Excellent. hole had to You don't get a lot of time it? to lay some layers. You know what I mean? Yeah, it take, it, yeah it's, it's, a different, v- it's a different genre of yeah, being very, on stage. Yeah, it's very surface kind of stories here. But they're not that they can't be great. No. no, no they no, just weren't is, yet. What was yes. that hole? What was that hole? Was that a glory hole? It was, it was a kind of a glory hole if... Um, if you have a really, really small penis, oh. it would be. It would be the kind of a glory. You know, you a tap or a keg, you put yeah, the yeah, thing. To exactly. me, a tap is a glory hole. 
Okay. Um, um, I'm married, so yes, yes. Stop I don't know if I should be guests, talking Christine. about this. Good Lord. <laughs> but I would like to say I'm from Wisconsin, so it's like as soon, oh, as, really? you, as, soon as you mentioned Hole in the Wall and Keg, I was like, I know where this is going. <laughs> okay. I've seen, yeah, they, they must see that every, every single year. They're like, I wonder who's going to do it this year. And they saw you come and they went, Keep yeah. your eye on this guy. I, I thought they outsmarted them. And uh, <laughs> that's why I still uh, fly with pot in my balls. So, uh, <laughs> Wow. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Pot? I'm, what? Pot. Uh, marijuana? In your balls. Yeah. Because yeah. if I don't, Chris, the terrorists win. I, that's the point. <laughs> yeah. I, you know, I, I, have a friend, I have a friend who has his marijuana card, and he was at the airport, and in his tennis bag, he had some pot, and he also had some sunscreen, and he gets to the airport, and they pull out the pot, and he gives him the marijuana card, you know, and they give him back the pot, and they take the sunscreen, they throw it away. <laughs> <laughs> that's, well, that's, per, that's a great story. And the sunscreen's actually that was a little even a more minute. expensive. <laughs> God bless Thanks, America. That was an, I, can I tell you my airport? Can I tell you my airport? Oh, look, airport. Yeah, do it oh, on airport. Wow. No, I had that. I was going through because they have you have to get an X-ray now to fly, and uh, but not from your doctor, from some fucking government worker at the airport, <laughs> right? And, uh, and I'm sure it's safe, and uh, which I didn't want to go through. But if you go through it, it doesn't even look like a, it, I thought it was going to be like a big dome over it. Woo, X-ray! It was like a regular thing. You just walk through, and the guy goes, "Stop! Put your arms up like this." And I was like, "Oh shit, I'm doing this." And I go, "I don't want to do this." He goes, "It's safe. Don't worry." And I hear this over. Out of my ear, I go, there's an anomaly on his upper right thigh. <laughs> an anomaly. Yeah. I like to call that my penis. So the guy goes, hey, there's an anomaly on your upper... I go, I know, I heard. Stop saying that. And he says, he goes, I have to pat you down with the front of my hands. Is that okay? And I'm like, is it okay if I fly with a wet spot? Is that okay? <laughs> it's less than three ounces. I know the rules. The point is... Uh, so the guy goes, I have to pat down your right leg so it could turn around. So I turn around and he pats down my left leg. So the guy making sure there's no terrorists on the plane doesn't even know his left from his right. I feel safe. Okay. One minute, six seconds. Fantastic. All right. Look at that. That worked Look out that. very well. All right. See? I think that we have uh, demonstrated the game. Should well, we? no, I want him to play again. Oh, actually. you want to do one more Wait time? A minute. You know, I say to myself, that worked out well. But as you know, he, he just said airport. So I guess it was well. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, your, you know, your story. My story, it ends, it ends well. I haven't done time yet, if that's right. what you mean. That was yeah. like, it was almost like a wild card is what it was. Okay. As if you had landed on wild card. Oh. And you say to yourself, I'm going to do airport. It's all about, look, she's obsessed with the wheel because she sold her gold to buy it's the true. wheel. It's I nice. My gold. She went to San Bernardino to a wheel place. Oh, no, yeah? No, I got An actual no, professional, no? Riverside, promo wheels in Riverside. That's Riverside exactly right. is in San Bernardino And you know, think about it. Somebody had a dream one day that I'm going to go to San Bernardino and start a wheel company. And, that and here it is. And that's it. That's so what dreams saying. come true in Los Angeles. That's All the right. point. That's right. All right, let's play one more time. And that's where Mitt Romney wants to take away from you. All right, what are you doing one more time? <laughs> yeah, with Jimmy, yeah. All right, let's All right, spin it one more oh, time for Oh, God real. damn it. I think the crowd's sick of me already. Spin that wheel! I have, a, I have a story for pets that just happened. Wild card! Oh, oh hey! Pets, let's hear the shotgun. So I have a dog, and I love my dog. I don't trust people who don't like dogs. And uh, my friend goes, I'm allergic to dogs. Are you allergic to fun, love, and good times? Is that what? <laughs> so my dog is sick, and I had to take him to the cardiologist because he has a... Yes, that's right. I don't have dental, but my dog has a cardiologist. <laughs> so they go, you have to give him these pills. It'll fix his heart. And so they have to hide him. He goes, they don't taste good. Hide him in his treats. So I hide him in his treats. He sniffs them out, and he won't eat them. And I'm like, what are you putting in these pills that taste so... My dog will eat shit, literally. Well, can you just make the pills taste like shit? And that's the end of that story. Yes! Oh, that's a great 43 story. 43 seconds, well. perfect. All right, so Jimmy uh, is going to go back to his seat. He and Carrie Armstrong... He'll enjoy some tapas. A round of applause for Jimmy as he makes his Jimmy way back are. to his seat. Uh... He and Carrie, they've got, like, notebooks, and they've got pens and, and things to write. So they're very good judges, and I trust them. Don't you, Hannes? I do trust them. They are trustworthy people. That's what I said. Yes. All right, you guys. Remember, the stories don't have to be of huge proportion, right, Hannes? Sometimes it's just an anecdote. Anecdote. Or a simple story that makes the best entertainment. Yes, exactly. So it doesn't have you... to be funny either. Right. I mean, it could... Just interesting and have a beginning, middle, and end. And a minute is a lot longer than you think. That's what we said before. And Boy, sure. honest, you make it sound like a fucking threat. I mean, like they it don't is. sound like they don't want to do this. They're just like, and this is what you have to do. Like you're yelling at them. Yeah, 
I always yell at people. Look, if you don't want somebody to yell at them, then you have got the wrong guy. You guys, I had to write down... Um, uh, don't Han- look at me! I had to write down Hannes' duties. Yeah, duty. Duty. I had to write that down, you know, so what he has to do tonight. And then one of the things I wrote down, what? What was the thing that you laughed at? Stop yelling at people? No, it said, look like you want to be here. Oh, that ain't going to happen. I'm not nearly a good enough actor. No, 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 I want to be here. I just always look like somebody just farted. That's my expression. All right, at all let's time. start this game, shall we? We shall. Pull the first name out of the story worthy bag of truth. The bag of truth, I'm and reaching the, in the back. And uh, the person's going to come on up here on stage. I'm going to tell you a little bit about them. They will spin the wheel, we will shoot them, and then they will tell they their will story. Okay. Brian Farrell. Brian Farrell, he's the Brian first guy up. Brian Farrell. Another good Irishman. Ah, oh, Faith and Bagada. Oh, I'll be telling you a tale of potatoes and Guinness. Oh, yeah, today, and now he's dancing. This is awesome. Brian Farrell, ladies and gentlemen. He's an actor, a writer, and a stand-up comedian from Los Angeles. That's unusual. Yeah, that's that. In this room, very freaky. He's got uh, corduroy pants on. You hardly see that anymore. Most recently, he wrote jokes for the choice. comedy-themed episode of ABC's Extreme Makeover Home Edition. You also may have seen him as the balloon man in John Cusack's Grace is Gone, or as the delivery guy in a Columbo, Columbo movie of the week called Columbo Likes the Nightlife. Well, Ryan also, yeah. he performs stand-up all over Los Angeles, and you can follow him on Twitter. Ladies and gentlemen, all put right, your hands together go. for Brian right. Farrell. Spin that wheel! Drunk tank? Okay, so I got a DUI uh, a few years ago. Not, not fun, but you, I, it's interesting because when you're in jail, you see some interesting people in there. I had uh, I was in there for twelve hours, and there was a guy. There was an old black guy who had a long beard. Uh, it was like a gray beard, and he kept twisting it. And it just was, he was looking at me. He was like, "You all right, man?" Yeah, I'm all right. It was like that was cool. And the, the other interesting thing about being in the drunk tank is that there's an intercom in case an uh, emergency happens. Uh, so I kept ringing that thing, going like, "How? how when am I going to get out of here?" Uh, and they're like. We don't know yet. And then I'd go over and I'd be like, do you guys have a phone book? I don't know anybody's number. Uh, And they're like, nope, we don't have that for you. And then this uh, drug addict guy looks over. He's like, they don't like it when you ask questions. (laughs) So that's my story. All right, Brian Farrell. 57 seconds, excellent. That's a great story. Brian, please take a uh, story-worthy candy bar of truth. Candy bar of truth, ladies and gentlemen. And enjoy that. Thank you, Brian. All right, who's the next storyteller, Hannes? The next storyteller is See, one of Hannes' duties, he pulls the name, he does the Adam thing. Gropman. Adam Gropman. Adam Gropman. Big time celebrity person, comedy guy. Here Originally from Boston, Adam Gropman, he's a comedian, an actor, and a writer. Adam sketch comedy group, Sketch Armstrong. Oh, That's no, sketchy. enough, enough. No, your sketch Sorry. group is not Sketch Armstrong? No, it is, it was. Oh, good. Uh, it won an entry into the San Francisco Sketch Fest. Did that happen? Uh, as a stand-up, Adam has performed all over the country. Man, you've been a stand-up for a long damn time, right? If 40, 50 years, something like that. <laughs> He's not yeah. that old. You all look right. fantastic. I was doing it before I was born. You can wow. find him on the Facebook. No. I think that that's common knowledge, don't you think? Yes. yes. <laughs> Did I write that? No, but oh, okay. I, I said okay. that. Adam right. would just kind of go, look at it. Look at it. He's no, I'm not a Facebook on Facebook. Face. No, I'm against Facebook. All right, let's give it to him. Spin that wheel! Pets. Pets. Okay. Ready? It was several years ago, and I was doing a bunch of internet dating, which was generally really good. And I met a woman off Craigslist, already there, Craigslist, step below your match.com. More unpredictable, more crazy and random. Very sweet girl, though. She, uh, she lived in Alhambra, and we met and, uh, at, a, at a coffee place in Pasadena. And she was really uh, quirky and weird, and, but kind of funny. And uh, sec- she mentioned something about, like, she owns cats and stuff, and I'm sort of listening, and she's cute. Second date, we go back to her place in Alhambra, and she has 15 cats in her one-bedroom apartment. 15. It was like a litter box with furniture. I'm literally avoiding stepping on live cats, like trouble with tribbles, you know what I mean? She made me feel like I have, like, you know, Donald Trump's apartment. And there are deal breakers when you meet someone about, you know, in a relationship. But I found out that having 15 cats does not prohibit me from having sex with a woman. (laughs) And women who own a lot of cats are good in bed. Thank you. All right. Adam Grotman. 
59 Look seconds. Look at that. Wait, take a, take a uh, candy bar of truth. He's, Here it a, comes. he's a professional is what he is. I got the Snickers candy bars, uh, Hannes. I was looking for Chuckles, but they didn't chuckles. have them. I never heard <clears> of the Chuckles. Chuckles. They're like, it's a, it's, a, it's a jelly candy. It's kind of an old person candy, oh, really. Oh, jelly candy. Chuckles, Snickers. I was looking for laugh thing. <sighs> Any candy that looks like it's grown on someone's foot is not a candy that I am interested in I think about this too much. Having, All right, uh, Hannes, All who's right. next? Uh, Jesse Conwheeler, I believe. Conwheeler, Jesse Conwheeler. Sorry Conwheeler. about that. Conwheeler. She's a funny girl. She's she a funny, is a funny writer girl. and a filmmaker. Her okay, wait, is- can I use this time to like ask you guys if I'm dying? Because I think just something happened. I think I'm dying. Okay. Okay. I was blending. I was making a smoothie, and like the kale wasn't going in, so I used my fork to poke it, and then the plastic, like, got off on the. It fell in the blender, but I was so fucking hungry that I just blended it anyway. So now I have like plastic fork instead of me. You so. ate plastic fork. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I'm not gonna die, right? Okay. You're not gonna die. Not, okay. However, well, I hope there not. will be a painful event in about 12 to 14 hours, uh, okay. as the tines make their way through your system. Oh, That's right. Tines. tines. Jessie I Conweiler. know the name of pieces of fork. She ha- is a writer and a filmmaker. I said that. Uh, the film that she She's has recently called Stupid Questions, uh, is a, it's been filmed and screened at the Holly Shorts in the Los Angeles Comedy Fest and the L.A. Shorts Fest, and it's been honored with an L.A. Movie Award of Elect. Uh, excellence, and you can exactly. find it at stupidquestionsmovie.com. You just like pay $27, they give them to everyone. No, it's very important. Stupidquestionsmovie.com. Boy, I totally respect a filmmaker, am I right, Hannes? That's right, right. And she came up here and asked a stupid question. So it's brilliant. That's it. it was brilliant <laughs> synergy and le- vertical marketing. All right, here or we go. something like that. Um, growing up. Growing up. Okay, um, I'm going to talk about growing up, getting my heart broken, because that's a huge part of growing up, and recently just happened to be big time. Okay, so I was dating this guy on a movie that I was working on, and he was so awesome, and I was the PA, so like, of course he liked me for like my inner soul and what I had to say. Um, so my first clue that it was totally fucked up is when we were hooking up in his hotel room, and he brought Crafty from that day as like dinner, yeah. um, and like to-go boxes, and we're hooking up, and his eye cal goes off for his fucking anniversary. Awesome. I wish I was making this up. And he was like, it was the anniversary of like the first time I saw you too. And like, yeah. Um, <laughs> um, and then he broke up with me after the show on Skype. And I was house sitting, so the cleaning lady was in the background. And we kept getting pixelated. And um, yeah, it was a really good time. So I guess it's going to make All me right. stronger. Woo-hoo. But I'm going to need those sw- Snickers. I'm going to need more than 56 seconds, ladies and gentlemen. That's a great story. Jesse Conway, ladies and gentlemen. Come on gentlemen. over. Have a, have a uh, candy bar of truth. Thank you very much. Oh, thank you. <laughs> What's going on? It's like there's deer running behind me and randomly. Uh, just every time he comes them. back from Guatemala, he's got live gunfire. I, don't uh, know I wanted to thank uh, a couple of our interns tonight. Joe Slepsky's here. Do you know Joe, Joe Slepsky? Slepsky? Give it up for Joe for Slepsky. Him. He's from Chicago, but that's okay. And also Jason Wallace is helping Jason us Wallace. out tonight. I don't know where he's from. And Sherry Lewandowski Sherry is helping Lewandowski us out Sherry Lewandowski is here. Thank My you very much. My beloved Sherry is helping us out. God, Hannes, enough, man. Just fucking marry her, and then you can stop this. You know what I mean? So wait, what Once you're telling me... Once you get me... married, you don't have to do that shit anymore. You know, like, oh, my uh-huh. beloved, and I love you so much. Yeah, right? how's that working out for you? <sighs> oh, snap. Oh, no, I didn't. That... <laughs> get that shotgun. Shoot that man. That's harsh. That was harsh. <laughs> Missed. Who's next, Hannes? Betty Goldstein, Betty Goldstein ladies and gentlemen. is coming to the stage. <laughs> oh, for goodness sake. Betty Goldstein. Let me find out where she is. Is she coming to the stage? She is making her way to the stage. She's coming the back way. She's coming the back way. Oh, the back way. Interesting. Thank you. There right. she is. Oh, Betty she made, Goldstein. She made a professional entrance through the uh, actual... Uh, she has Interest. told stories all over town, including The Moth, the KCRW Masquerade Ball. I love a good story. National Come to Your Senses Day. Story worthy. That's our show. That's our show. She's uh, on The Moth all the time. Tasty words, story salon. And she goes on and on. Basically, what she's saying is she's been everywhere. But she ends it up with, she's also been at the Pacoima Middle School. <laughs> I wouldn't mind hearing about that. Uh, Betty, Finally, a gig that rates below us. She is a blogger for the Huffington Post. In fact, yeah. one of her stories is up right now on the wedding page. Yeah. And it's up right the second, yeah. Uh, she's also a contributing author to What Was I Thinking? 58 Bad Boyfriend Stories, which was published <laughs> by St. Martin's Press. 
All right, you guys, let's give it up for Betty Goldstein. Break up. I have one of those stories. Ready, Betty, go. When I was in the first grade, I sat next to Tommy Rock. He and I were missing the same front teeth at the same time. The rules of Beachy Elementary were at recess, when the freeze bell rings, you have to freeze and wait for the second bell, at which time you walk back to class. One day during recess, precisely at the time the freeze bell rang, Tommy kissed me on the lips. I didn't want that moment to end, but then the second bell rang, so we walked back to class. Our teacher, Mrs. Oshat, saw that kiss, so when we got back, she broke us up and made Tommy sit in the front of the room and me in the back row. I couldn't understand why she was punishing us just for following school rules. Thank you. All right. Betty Goldstein, ladies and gentlemen. Please take your candy bar of truth. Have a candy bar of truth. It's a good time. It's a good time. She told a long story, a comprehensive story, and and under a a minute. It had characters. It had characters. It had depth. It had secondary characters. I like that. You know, Betty happened to call me today, It was hot, by the way. I am so turned on right now. You are? No, no. She called me today, and I had a question for Betty Goldstein. It's a good question. Yes. She says, um, Uh, Christine, I'm on tonight. What are you? What are you here for? Oh, I thought you were asking her a question. Okay, okay, I'm talking to. Be- okay, come on up, and Go ask ahead. the. Tell the folks, Betty. Tell the folks what you asked me on the phone today. Okay, drunk tank. I, I've never been in a drunk tank. I've never been drunk. I have no experience with drunk tanks. So I asked her, "What do I do if it lands on drunk tank?" And I said, "That's a hell of a story right there, Betty. How'd you get through <laughs> the '70s without being drunk?" So I came up with a great story, but I didn't get it tonight. That's okay. Uh, Maybe okay. another time. Another time. Thank you very much. It's one of my best stories. Awesome. I bet it is. I can't wait. I can't wait. Good. Thanks, Betty. Okay. All right. Our Who's up next, next comedian is Kevin McGeehan. McGeehan. Kevin McGeehan. McGeehan. Kevin McGeehan. There's a lot of Irish tonight. Kevin McGeehan. He's a writer and a performer that hails from the Midwest, as you and I do, Hannes. Yes, exactly. He spent 10 years as an ensemble member of the acclaimed Second City in Chicago. That's a big deal. That's big. Sh- yeah, look at that. Big doings. People big, big impressed. stuff. He's a frequent performer at The Moth, Story Slams, and he also hosts a bi-mentally storytelling show at the Second City Hollywood called Funny Because It's True, which is ironic because our show is also about true stories. Sure, sure, so it sure. all kind of comes together. Yeah, we leave the funny out because we have no guarantees on that. So, and yeah. uh, anyway, Funny Because It's True is also a podcast that's available on iTunes. Here we go for Kevin McGeehan. California. Six months after I arrived in Los Angeles, my roommate came to me with a question. The question was, do you mind if my long distance girlfriend comes out and stays here with us indefinitely? I said, sure, that's fine. Don't worry about it. But then this escalated when he told me, oh, just so you know, it's not just her. It's her, her cat, and her, wait for it, 16-year-old daughter. So they were coming to live with us indefinitely. The thing that stood out the most to me, and I'm going to slow this down a little bit because I've got time, is that there were moments where it was British office uncomfortable in the house because they were there ultimately 14 days and they broke up on day five. Thank you. That's a Thank good you. story, Kevin McGeehan. Kevin McGeehan. seconds. Please, Please take, a, uh, take candy your bar of candy truth. bar of truth. Hannes and I happened to be in a movie together last year. Right, not the porno that we talked we about in our previous broadcast. We did do a porno together. That is true. It was a voiceover porno. Um, that's true. No, it was called Ballbusters 2. And Much like Spider-Man 2, better than the original. That's right. But and we both did voiceover. We, it was like we got like 100 bucks cash for like 45 minutes. Right. It was a French porno, and they decided to dub the parts of the porno that no one has ever watched, right. which is the dialogue. Now, I didn't have to do things like, uh, uh. I didn't have to do like the moaning because, because moaning is in any language, isn't it? It is international. But I had to say things like, you know, like, uh, Cindy, come on in and sit on the couch. You know, like, my cousin's going to be over in a minute. But then the, I had to say one really bad thing. Should I say it? Well, yeah, I have to say it now. You want me to say it? You can shoot me if you need to, Jorge. I had to say, (laughs) turn, (laughs) turn, 
Turn, turn me over and fuck me in the ass. Yeah. That's not like me. Uh, yeah. All right, anyway, honestly. You never I, asked her to ask to be turned over. Thank you. I'm here all week. Tip your waitress. Try you some see, tapas, ladies and gentlemen. It's like On that I, note, I'd like to re- reiterate how much I want friend, you to eat tapas. But is that a friend? I don't know. And, your best friends are the ones that can rip on you, right? Well, then you well, must no, be no, like no, my the, fucking soulmate. No, no, no. The, uh, you know, when you're on stage, friendship goes out the window. That's what I'm saying. Ladies and gentlemen, Hannes and I were in a movie last year. It was called Halloween Party. Halloween Party. That was the name of the movie. And this is actually the soundtrack to Halloween Party. And the next person we're drawing the name is from the, uh, the audience, right? Uh, the audience the member? Audience? Okay. And I the audience need, uh, member, is, us- Sherry's going to come on up and give you the uh, audience member bag of truth or something. And then this person gets a CD. Thank you. And also the winner gets a CD. So that's a very nice thing. And uh, I enjoyed this. This, uh, this was a great movie, actually. Me and Hannes both uh, did pretty well, I'll be honest with you. Yes, I played Cecil B. DeMille, saying, and you saying. played... Uh, and I'm gonna, by the again? way, I'm going to make up the bio for whoever this is. Just listen to me go. Okay, great. It is... Jackie Marriott. Jackie Marriott. Jackie Marriott. Jackie Marriott comes from the esteemed Marriott family of hotels around the country. Yes. Enjoy their breakfast buffet and also room service 24 hours a day. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, give it up for Jackie Marriott. Jim, that wheel. Oh, oh, Growing up. Growing I don't up. think this is that hard of a topic, I'll be honest with you. Well, we have all grown up. Well, that's what most I'm saying. Of us, well, most me. of us. That's not all of us, right? <laughs> what? There we go. We're so sorry to shoot you. We usually don't do that to audience members. We're quite pleased people come. We are grateful people come. You know how hard it is to get an audience in L.A.? I know, I know. The choices, the entertainment choices, it's ridiculous. I know. I think Thank the you. Dodgers are playing tonight. I don't know. Here she goes. Anyhow, so go ahead. <laughs> Okay, so I grew up in a country town. I was a farm girl, uh, pigs and cucumbers what we had. And we had a community of uh, cousins that we all lived. We used to travel down dirt roads to see each other, you know, up on the hill, down on the hill. And we have a cousin. I had a cousin named Lavora, a cousin named Sanja, a cousin named Wendy. And we all used to travel the roads together to visit one another because that's all we had to do because it was the country. And so one day, and we were probably 10 years old, there was a church that sat in the center of our community, of our five houses. And one day we went to go see Lavora, and Lavora was cooking one day. And uh, we all traveled down to her house, opened the door, and she was frying some bologna. She was going to make a bologna sandwich. And it was a cast iron pan, and it was a lot of grease, and it caught on fire, and the whole kitchen started burning. And we were like, oh, shit. My Aunt Thelma's silver and yellow. Our wallpaper was melting. And we were like trying to find flour, sugar, anything that we could find to douse this flame. And we were, oh, my God, she's going to kill her. And we finally put the fire out. And we went to the church, and we said, we're going to pray. We're going to pray real hard that my Aunt Thelma doesn't beat Lavora's ass. So we went down to the church, and we all prayed all together. Please don't beat Lavora's ass. Please don't beat Lavora's ass. God, please don't let Aunt Thelma beat Lavora's ass. And so I went home, and, I, and my, my mother was Geneva. That was her, her friend and confidant. So she calls up Jimmy. She goes, Geneva, Lavora burned my house down. I was going to beat her ass, but something stopped me. And when she said that, I knew what it was. Yeah. Jackie Marriott, ladies and gentlemen. Jackie Marriott. Jackie Marriott. Please, take a candy Please bar. Please have a uh, candy bar of truth and the soundtrack to the film Halloween Party coming you know, to a theater isn't near that you amazing? soon. it's amazing? It's so L.A. for people just to come out randomly out of the audience and then they just have a story. Like, they, I mean, they just know how to perform. How it's does a, that happen? It's, it's, an audi- it's, an audi- it's a city full of talent. It's a city full of talent, God damn it. God damn it. Who's exactly. up next, Hannes? I'll tell you something. My talent is not pulling that out in time. How's All right, going Wendy back? Wilkins, ladies and gentlemen. I don't, what did you just say? My talent is not pulling it out in time. Oh, I that, don't know what that even wow, means. Wow, did that not, yeah. Oh, we're actually getting some response from the audience. Other people wow, not knowing joke, how to pull it out. Penis joke finally gets to laugh. We've been I have to look. Of course, on the dick joke, I get up here. <laughs> Thank you. Of course. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen. Story Wendy of Wilkins. my life. She is such a talent, you guys. She's a writer, an actor, and a stand-up. Her advice-minded website, Your Big Sister, has caught the attention of users of the World Wide Web with its motto, yeah, that only your big sister will tell you the truth. I love that. It's true. Only your big <laughs> Big sister will tell you the truth. That's right. And if you, you don't have one, she will be your big sister. Articles <laughs> written by many big sisters and brothers. Experiences, uh, you can experience the carnage that comes with viewing other people's mixtapes and get dating tips <laughs> from the popular web series, How to Train a Boyfriend. 
Number on six your up today. bigsister.com. I did a story on your bigsister.com. You did. As You'd fact, think I would good. have nothing to share. It would be it, no. It's very good. I have never written for yourbigsister.com. You can for obvious reasons. What, what, what Hannes would he be able to write about? What I, would he say? Like any, as long as you have a strong opinion about something, you can write whatever you want. But it's something you well, would tell a like sibling. Me. No, I I mean it's it's kind of like yeah, in the sense that someone needs to learn a lesson. But it's advice. It's yeah, an advice yeah. thing. But it's still you know. Hannes, what do you know? Whatever. Uh, I know. Almost nothing. That's what I'm saying. I don't think he's going to be on your any, on your blog yeah. anytime soon. Also, right, it sounds guys. like you'd have to really work at it and and like edit it and uh, th- yeah. Wendy's like, can I spin the goddamn wheel already? Spin that wheel. The topic is plans. Okay, so. Hmm. Uh, I've worked in this business 20 years. I came out here in 1992. And I've been trying to work my way up to be a TV writer for hour-long drama, even though I do stand-up. What I write really well is hour-long drama. So I was a writer's assistant on this show called Lie to Me. And uh, the b- one day, uh, we were sitting around having birthday cake for somebody. And one of the exec producers, who is younger than me, says, uh, yeah, if you don't make it as a staff writer by the time you're 32, you never will. And two weeks before, he wasn't around, and I had my 40th birthday. So I so got back to him, right? And he came in, and he's like, I'm real sorry. Um, but I'm wondering, uh, you know, what's your plan B? Uh, and I kind of said, well, comedy didn't work out, so this is my plan B. And he's like, yeah, but really, what's your plan B? And so uh, that night I went and took a dump on his car. And then the next morning he brought me flowers. Thank you very much. Oh, my God. Wendy Wilkins, ladies and gentlemen. Revenge poop style. That is an ending. I have never left a scene like that. Have you done that? No, no. That is is a good night, ladies and gentlemen, tip your waitress ending. You're like, I'm out. By the way, Wendy, I I can put a positive spin on this story. He thought you were under 32. Oh, that's pretty good, Hannes. Good for Come you. On. He didn't think you were 40, so uh, there's that. Maybe you should have married that guy. Speaking of waitresses, do tip your waiters and waitresses tonight. They're working very hard for you. We've yes. got a, a bartender over here called Victor and then a bartender over here called Hotty Hot. And <laughs> you can also go outside. Enjoy yourself outside. So there's lots to do here at the at LC. The, and enjoy the tapas. Oh, the tapas. Don't forget about the tapas. The tapas are always important. Let me reach into the bag of truth Would and you pull please? out our next... Our next person is, oh, the voice of story with Bill Ratner. Bill Ratner, ladies and gentlemen. I'll tell you what, you guys. I couldn't do it without Bill Ratner. He's a great friend and a great talent. He is a voiceover guy playing the voice of Flint on TV cartoons, G.I. Joe, Robot Chicken, and Family Guy. He is an eight-time winner of the Moth Story Slam. What's happening? He's also a published short story and essay writer, actor, and he's told stories all over stage in all over the world. He also owns three bicycles in varying states of disrepair. Wow. Spin that wheel! Oh. California. We're in California, so that would right there be somewhat, you know, easy to talk about. You could say, like, I'm in California now, and, you know... What? Bill's looking at us like, you don't need to delay. I'm okay, a, sorry, I'm a Bill. pro. He is a pro. <laughs> oh, shit. Uh, so I uh, was at a party a while ago, and I met this woman who was just delightful and funny and wacky and intelligent and wrote poetry and all this and that, and I thought, I'm in love. And I said, where do you live? And this is out in Thousand Oaks. And she said, I live in Las Vegas, but I'm from California. And so, uh, and we spent, you know, the evening together in a, in a lovely, wholesome way. And uh, I said, well, how could I see you? Do you come here often? And she said, no, uh, I, 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 I'm a bellhop in Vegas. And I make a lot of money, so I'll show you a really great time. <laughs> and at the time, 900 bucks uh, a week was, is, you know, it was like, like, like $1,800 a week as a bellhop. So I went to Vegas and called her up and picked her up after her shift, and she was a completely different person. She had dyed her hair black. She had been blonde. She didn't smile. Her IQ had gone down about 35 points. She didn't want to talk about her poetry. We went back to my hotel room, and she fell asleep on my couch. It's my story. 
Wow. Yes. Bill Ratner, ladies and gentlemen. Bill Ratner. Bill Ratner. That was one of those stories that I was like getting closer and closer, like, yeah, yeah, That's like a, that. A rare Vegas story that does not end in getting laid. Interesting. I myself once went many years ago on what I thought was a booty call to Las Vegas. Turned out I was wrong. What kind of call That's was it? That's the worst place in the world to go and be like, oh, we're not having sex again, even though we were dating last year. Okay, great. I'll, I'll be at the pool. What are you saying? You went with a girl? No, I, a girl I knew, the girl I had dated, lived way out in the desert, and she was like, hey, hey I'm going to be in Vegas. And I'm like, well, I'll drive to Vegas. Because you thought it was a booty call. Yes. And I got there, it turned out we were just having lunch. Once. <laughs> so what I'm saying is... That sucks. You know, it would be, if I'd gone to Laughlin, I think I would have been less disappointed. But once you get all the way to Vegas, you're right. like... If you had oh. stopped at the border and just done that roller coaster. Right, right. Or what is the name of that town? I have no idea. Somebody knows. I don't know where that What's is. What's the name? Of- the State Line. That's State right. Line. State is Line. Is that a name of a town? Awesome, man. Isn't that funny how everybody, we all know that. LA is very funny. What's the it's- place with the pastrami burger? The Greek place. What? Baker. 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 There's a Greek place with a pastrami burger. I always see the sign. That's interesting. All right. Who's the next uh, story? Oh, my. Oh, my. The lovely and talented Jennifer Valley. Jennifer Valley. She's a wonderful girl. (laughs) Jennifer Valley. Ladies and gentlemen, she began her show business career at the age of 11 months old when she was plucked off the streets to be the Gerber baby. A Gerber baby. You're not going to get that anywhere else, ladies and gentlemen. Since then, Jennifer has worked as an actress, a stand-up, a celebrity interviewer, and a TV comedy writer and producer. She's written and produced shows for Oxygen, Fox, Fox Reality, Lifetime, NBC, CBS, EPIX, I don't know what that is, uh, Yahoo, and the TV Guide channel. Jennifer is also featured in the book, She's So Funny. It's a collection of jokes by female comics. That makes sense. And I would like to ask you, are you available on Facebook? Because you have some daughters, and for a long time, you were banned from Facebook. I'm still not on Facebook or Twitter. Because your daughters ban you. They, they ban Okay, you. let's just hope you get um, kids and we can hear about your daughters. <laughs> yeah. All right, All ready? Right, here we go. Spin that wheel! Plans. Plans. Well, my plan when I was younger was to grow up like Sophia Loren. I would be an ageless beauty wanted by men from 18 to 80. But as I get older, I just look more and more like the Grinch. Um, This came home the other day when I was at Trader Joe's. Everybody knows Trader Joe's with the crew members. I was buying some wine. I was standing in line, and the crew member, Todd, says to me, Can I see some ID? Wink. Wink. Like, you are so fucking old, bitch. Oh, oh, I have that old bitch for ID. Aren't I funny? Wink. <laughs> so when I was 21 and they asked for my ID, I was, yes, yes, I was proud to show it. When I was 30, I was flattered, and now I'm a fucking wink. Thank you. Wow, that's yes. a good story. Jennifer 54 Valley. 54 seconds. Please have a, a, a candy bar of truth. You guys, seriously, candy bar we of truth. have candy so bar much truth, talent please. up here. It really amazes me. Great stories, great stories. Thank you, everybody, for, for coming and participating. Reaching into the bag, reaching who's into up, the bag. Who's up, on us? Hang on, the, 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 they're dwindling. They're running away from me. Oh, Sharon Houston, ladies Sharon and gentlemen. Sharon Houston, ladies and gentlemen. It's hot babe after Sharon hot Houston. babe. Here comes a big talent. She is a stand-up comedian, also an actress, and Sharon has appeared on Comedy Central, MTV, VH1, E, CBS, and Oxygen. She recently appeared on Swick, uh, Nick Swartzen's Pretend Time. Nick Swartzen's Pretend Time. Can Pretend you say that? Uh, no, he is the star of uh, that movie that failed uh, epically. What was the name of that movie? You guys, don't bring no, no, that no. up. I should be so lucky as to fail. We should in be the so major... lucky to be in a failure. Yeah, I, I, I would love to. I would I'm love not... to. Be... I love failing. No, no, no. I would love he... to have a movie come out and not fucking do well. No, no, I would no. love that. Thank yeah, you. Yeah, I know. Thank you very much. Please no, no, no. cancel I'll my I'll wear a diaper sitcom. on the CW at this point. I don't care yeah. anymore. Cancel my sitcoms. Fucking what keep I mean me is, out of the. No, Go people ahead. will remember that movie longer than if it had been a moderate hit. People will still be watching that and they'll be like, 
This isn't so bad. Well, that's, that's the glass half full for you, Hannes. Yeah, Hannes you know, that's my attempt lining. to be optimistic. Listen, one more thing. Uh, Sharon Houston, boy, I'll tell you what. She's got a really funny podcast herself. She just launched it recently, last summer, actually, called Daytime Justice. Daytime Justice is Daytime Justice. from her experience as a court time producer uh, for those shows like Judge Judy and Judge Joe and all those guys, and it is so damn funny, I can't even tell you. So you can find Daytime Justice at DaytimeJustice.com, but and of some course, e- it's on iTunes. And some episodes aren't funny. It's actually actually taken a turn where uh, where I'm actually interviewing people about real cases where they really got screwed by the justice system. And I actually think those are almost more interesting than the ones with the judges or the crackheads. So you it's, might want to... It still makes me laugh, I'll be honest with you. Oh, oh, being on death row is hilarious. <laughs> <laughs> all right, all okay. right. Here we go, you guys. Spin that wheel! Oh, Okay. School days. School days. <laughs> when I was a senior in high school, I wanted to do things different. I was a different chick. I was in the drama department, but I also hung out with the football players, and it was my goal to bring everyone together. So when prom came along, I was like, I'm going to turn some heads, and I'm going to make another statement. I decided I was going to design my own tuxedo... And since I wanted to be Janet Jackson, and I was a member of the Rhythm Nation... I had this crazy tuxedo design with huge broad shoulders and red military rope around my arm, red satin on the inside of the tail. The tail was really long, super micro mini, and I wore pantyhose with a line down the back and super high heels, and I lived in Texas, and I was dating a black guy. Yeah! I walked into that prom, and I was like, what? And I'm like, my keychain in my earring, and I'm like, let's get this. And can I tell you, that night, every single person that I thought judged me for dating a black guy came up to me and they were like, you changed our minds about the way we see relationships. You changed our mind. All these little white girls with blonde hair were like, I had sex with a black guy and it was fabulous. Like, I had no idea the Pandora's box I would have opened just by trying to be Janet Jackson and dating a black guy. That's a great story. Sharon Houston, ladies and gentlemen. Sharon Houston. That deserves a... uh, Sharon Houston, that's a funny story. That's a good story. Snickers of truth. Uh, how many uh, storytellers are left here? I believe we have four left. I a couple could be of wrong. storytellers I believe we have left. Four. Uh, and so who's and, next? Uh, the next one is the oh, here he is. Well, Evan? I've known since the first grade, yeah. Evan Gore. Evan Gore. Gentlemen, I have known. Hannes always has to bring up that he has known Evan Gore since the first grade. Right. It's so, really all my bio is. Does that mean that you guys are the exact same age? Is that right? Yeah. Uh, Hannes has I... got about six months on me. Is that right? But don't go spoiling it. That might end up being my story. <laughs> <laughs> Evan Gore, you guys, he's a comedy writer and a producer, chiefly of animation for Disney Channel, Cartoon Network, and Nickelodeon. Evan has also developed TV pilots for the graphic novel Pinky and Stinky. Oh, that's so old. And the property is Doodle Zoo. What about that? That's is an old bio. What is your Goat new thing? Duke. Duke. It's not very it was like I was stoned when I was writing this, bi- this bio. I couldn't believe it. Goat and Duke. Yo, um, Evan is also a voice director for TV movies. He's acted on TV and in commercials. And he's a member, former member of the Second City in Chicago. Do you know Kevin McGahan? I don't. I met Kevin. I uh, never go. met him. There you go. But you it's guys, like we went to college. One of party. you is lying. No, it's like, it's like uh, oh, uh, you went to U of I, I went to U of I. There you I. go. You guys should party. All right, ladies and gentlemen, let's give it up for uh, Evan Gore. Spin that wheel! California. California! California. I felt that in my gut. Uh, Early on when I moved to California, a friend said, you know, it's in California. You put anything in the ground and it'll grow. Well, I've never been much of a gardener. Uh, certainly as a kid, I did not like. We had a big backyard when I was a kid. My parents spent an inordinate amount of time back there, and I hated it. But I'm older now. I have children of my own. And the stresses of middle-aged life. And uh, I live in California, where you can put anything in the ground, and it'll grow. And so I started growing tomatoes and, and other vegetables, which is a wonderful pastime. It calms you down. It's, it's every wonderful thing. My local farmer's market was selling heirloom watermelon uh, starters. And there was a $5 contest. You bought this thing for $5, and everyone in the neighborhood was supposed to get these things, plant them in the ground, and it would be a contest. And um, the months went by, 
and it turned out that I was one of the only people that actually entered this thing. And it was, it turns out, a bad year for watermelons. But I grew uh, a thing that was about a foot long, and I had to kill it, slice it open. It was all white. It never developed its sugars. All Killed right. Oh, Evan Gore, whatever. ladies and gentlemen. It's about if you kill dead things. things. You can grow dead things. A foot long watermelon story. You don't hear that every day. No. You see what I'm saying? Take, uh, thank you, Evan. I know I've, there's other things to see, do that's in not Los what Angeles. I heard. What I heard was Evan say it's a foot long and white. Two things you never hear together. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Hannes, you are my dear friend. I don't know why. Yeah, I could almost uh, count on me for a good penis joke. This is why I'm around, folks. All right. How's it going back there, Carrie and Jimmy? How are we doing back there, the judging? Good. I mean, yeah, we got three more, guys. Enjoy the penis jokes very much. Good. Oh, we you, also enjoy you. the penis jokes. All right, who's next? Oh, Michael Cass, Michael ladies Cass. and gentlemen. <laughs> Michael Cass, little, ladies and gentlemen. He's written a little face on there. I like the smiley, smiley face. face. That's yes. encouraging. Michael Cass, folks, he's a storyteller, a writer, and an actor. He recently completed filming an all-black adaptation of Shakespeare's Henry IV. And he's still not sure how that happened. Because uh, I'm not for Radio Land. I'm not, I'm not black. <laughs> He's currently taking classes at the Magic Castle, and that's you, further you proof you are not black. Studying nicely, at the Magic Castle. <laughs> I am a member of the Magic Shoot. Castle. Did you know that? Again, the three of us couldn't be whiter than I the know. inside of I, his watermelon. If you guys, anybody out there, you guys want tickets to the Magic Castle? I got them right here for you. I will give them to you. I swear yeah. to God, I will. She is. Uh, she's true. All right, you guys. Uh, he is taking classes, and he will show you a magic trick if you promise not to mock his skills. He also blogs. <laughs> no dice. <laughs> he also blogs at fierceandnerdy.com, and his latest blog is titled "Seductive Magic Presto." Ooh. Don't think I didn't look at that, Michael. In which he talks Sorry. about the reason why he's learning magic is to. Well, it's to seduce women, but what I've actually used it for is to distract women who are trying to break up with me. I see. And like, be like wait, no, my... no, don't see this magic trick. Yeah, look what's in my pants. Yeah. <laughs> All right, here we go. Spin that wheel. School days. School days. We've had that tonight, School haven't days. we? We have. Have we? That's what it says school days in California like a shotgun blast. That's true. Um, <laughs> hey, yo. Oh, yeah, I shot people, That's right. That's right, you crossed the line. It's all my fault. Go ahead, I'm sorry. No, it's cool. Uh, when I was 14, I was taking Spanish. It was my freshman year. I walked in, and uh, Senor Codevia, who was like this 50-year-old <laughs> serious Spanish dude, everyone else had had to conjugate verbs, right? So I spent all night learning how to conjugate verbs. He comes in, throws his bag down, looks me in the eyes, and says, Miguel, ¿cuál es tu problema? What is your problem? So at that exact moment, my problem was that he was not asking me to conjugate fucking verbs. But that's not what he meant. So I said in English, I, I don't have a problem. I'm fine. He said, no. Tu problema es que no tienes problemas. Your problem is that you don't have problems. So I spent the next hour defending my life, <laughs> telling him, no, I, I have problems. I don't play sports well. That sucks. And I spend too much time doing homework, and that's really bad. And I don't have a girlfriend. That's how and Miguel, tu no tienes problemas. Es problema muy grande. And then at the end, after I had done all of this in Spanish, he looked at me. He gave me an A. I was drenched in sweat. But he looked profoundly disappointed, like I had missed the whole point of the test. Thanks. My yes. dear, Michael Cass. Oh, look at that. One minute, 18 seconds. Take a, take a Snickers of truth. All right, who's next, Honest? The next, uh, next, uh, our, 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 our middle. Well, you pull Wait, that name. On, it, I fell, wanna... it fell on the ground. I've got All it. All right, take it. your time. Take your time. I want to point out, and I want to give a big thanks Ow. to the person here who's responsible for our logo. As you know, folks, the logo is very important for, like, the iTunes, etc. You have to have it, like, look good and, like, a half inch by half inch, and it has to be clear, and it's harder than you think. So we have this friend, and she's a graphic designer, and she is the one that came up with all of our logos, including the wheel, and I'd like to give a big round of applause to Carolyn Bernetto. Carolyn, Carolyn. Bernetto, ladies and gentlemen. Woo. Honestly, you guys know how it is in L.A. It takes you know a what? village, man. We're going to give her a soundtrack to... Halloween, Halloween party. party. We should do that. She's going to get that. By the way, Halloween party, the soundtrack, it says, if you can't dance to this, you're dead. 
So that's a good. I think that's a good thing. So you're um, more threatening. I enjoy that. But real quick, hold on. I yeah, want to say one sorry. more thing, man. Yeah, sorry. Carolyn, I want to. I appreciate her so much because, as you guys know, when you do a project in LA, like I do, Story Worthy, and we're working on this game show, you need people. You need friends. You need people to help you, like give you a freebie or whatever. Anyway, Carolyn has done that for me, and I want to give a big thanks to her. Like I said. No. Yes. Also, now, Carolyn and I have the same birthday. Isn't that weird? It's so and random. And you both have five-year-old daughters. And we do both have five-year-old daughters. That's right. Wait a minute. And the and same, the same initial. initials. Dun, dun, dun. And we both sleep with Les Hunter. Oh, no, sorry. Oh, hey. I don't sleep oh, with your snap. husband. Oh, snap. The line is very far behind us. <laughs> the line is very All right, who's far. who's next, man? Who's next? Uh, Les Hunter, oddly enough, is next. No, no. Frank Nicotero. Frank Nicotero. Frank Nicotero. <laughs> All right, you guys, many people know that Frank Nicotero, you guys know him from his five-year stint as the host of the comedy game show verbatim. Street Smarts. A uh, lot of people say, A lot of stoners, oh, good. Yes, Street all right, good. Guy. People who don't have jobs and are unemployed at 2 a.m. Thank it's you like, for remembering. J- yes, it's like jaywalking. <laughs> That's our core funny. audience. He's also been a host of the Daily Show on Yahoo TV called Primetime in No Time. That just was a good fired. show. Just got fired. Recently, but the thing is, it, it was a good show because Four you could stay though. in the loop, but you didn't have to watch all those crazy right, shows. Exactly. That was nice. Uh, also, Frank is now even doing Man on the Street segments for TBS uh, Weekend Extra, and he's probably from Pittsburgh. Guess who else is from Pittsburgh? Christine Hines. Blackburn, right there. You are also from That's Pittsburgh. That's what I'm talking And the about. Pirates are tied uh, against the Dodgers right down the street, 1-1 one, one in the 6th, That's the Oh, is that right? Yep. All right. Sorry if you're uh, TiVoing the game, sorry. You can find him at Frank Nicotero. This goes up next week. I think they'll know the odds <laughs> are by then. FrankNicotero.com. By the way, this, this podcast does go up on Monday. I think it's the 16th. Monday the 16th. There is that you what go. it is? Yes. Okay, we can uh, all Monday is the 16th. Hear Matter everybody fact, in the it. audience, and they can hear themselves, and they know they were there. Yes, do that. <laughs> it's we like need, that and time your... I was at that Coldplay concert at the Hollywood Bowl, and then Yellow came out. It was live at the Hollywood Bowl, and I was like, eh. <laughs> <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, do it with me. Spin that wheel. Passport. Passport. Shit. Okay, Passport. Uh, no. Uh, passport. All right. Thank you. I recently uh, I went to Canada. I know I'm bragging. Um, yeah. My wife's from Canada, and I go up there for a wedding. I have time for a picture. Okay. And, uh, and uh, I get there, and I give them my passport, and they go, you can't come in the country. And I'm like, well, what are you talking about? I'm like, actually, I'm here for a wedding, so that would be actually fucking great if I had to fly back to L.A. So um, they said, yeah, apparently you got a DUI back in 2000. We don't allow you in the country Canada, if you have a DUI. I'm sorry, Canada? Canada? They are the drunkest people on the planet. Are you kidding? They drink and they play hockey, they fight, they drink their Molson, they drive their fucking Zambonis down the street. They are drunk. So I'm like, are you serious? I can't get in? So they're like, well, there's one thing we could do since you're so nice. You can pay a one-time entrance fee and we'll let you in, but then you're going to have to go to the consulate and get that expunged. So I had to pay $200 to get in to go to that wedding. So basically... I paid a cover charge to get in to Canada of $200. They gave me my passport back, which they said they would take away from me, and that's my passport story to Canada. Thank you. Good night. All right. Yes. Frank Nicotero, two. Oh, very that's nice. That's a good story. Two story. And the two seconds was you taking the picture. So really, you're in a minute. Yeah, there it's you a go. flush. It's take flush. A, take a Snickers of truth. That's a good story. How wow. funny. So that was like, if, if I were you, Frank, I would have said that's, my, that's your wedding present. You know? Like, happy wedding. I got, I'm here. You know what I mean? Yeah, who would pay if to get you, into Canada? If you this come a, from out of town, you should not be required to bring a wedding gift. Am I right? Uh, that is right. If you actually bring your ass, especially if, yeah, you if they charge over. You go out of the over. country for a wedding, you don't have to bring a present. Thank you. I don't think that's right. a lot to ask. Now we have our final storyteller our of the final evening. final storyteller. So, Jimmy and Carrie, you guys are back there. You so, have your iPhones. You're looking, you get the flashlight. You're looking at your notes. You're getting right? excited. So this, you're formulating your winner. I but see not that yet, light. because we have one more. <laughs> and he is actually a former winner of Shotgun Ooh, Story that Worthy. That means he's good. Ladies and gentlemen, John Grady. John Grady. Come on, louder than that, you guys. John Sir. Grady. John Grady, ladies and gentlemen, he's an actor and a writer from New York City. He starred off Broadway in Spalding Gray. Stories left to tell. I saw that. Uh, with him or with somebody else? No, with somebody Gray. else. And he performed as a member of the Blue Man Group. So picture him now in blue. He has a very popular one-man show, Fear Factor, K9 Edition. I also saw that. Yes. It's about wow, him and his dog. You have a lot of things. I know. John is a multiple story slam winner at The Moth, both in L.A. and in New York City. And his stories have aired on KCRW, NPR, CBC Radio in Canada. Fucking Canadians. 
John has also trained at the National Ballet School in Toronto, and he danced with the ballet British Columbia and Vancouver. That's very, that's very exciting. That's like real fine art. It's like that's talent. Like this. It's that like is talent. fine art. Also, he loves cereal. You can find him at thejohngrady.com. Thejohngrady.com. Right. Here we the go, John folks. John Grady. Kids. Kids. My prom was a, a disaster, and what I mean by that is I didn't get laid. I put all this pressure on me to get laid at my prom. I wasn't even with, with a girlfriend. It was just a, a friend of mine, really, and, uh, and I, I probably ruined it for her and really ruined it for all my friends involved, but I had a chance to redeem myself when I got invited to a second prom. Um, I'm in my early 20s, and I'm training at the National Ballet School in Toronto, and it's a boarding school for kids grades 4 through 12, and Emily Monar, one of the graduating seniors, asked me to her prom, and I decided I'm going to make it all about her. It's just all about her, about her getting her accolades and awards before she goes off and, and starts her professional career. I'm there with her parents sitting at the banquet table and I'm in my 20s now I can talk politics with them and we're at the party and we're dancing we're having a good time eating then we go to the after party afterwards and we're drinking having a good time with all her friends and I'm a total gentleman at the very end of the night I just give her a peck on the cheek and I send her on her way oh damn it now that's two proms at which I didn't get laid thanks Yes. <laughs> John Grady, ladies and gentlemen. John Grady. Please take a Snickers of Truth. That was clever because see, it was about the prom, but he was a kid. I get so it. I get totally it. There gets... was a twist. I get the twist, Honest. No, I'm not explaining it to you. I'm explaining it Jeez. to our audience. They're all staring at me glassy eyed. All right, you guys. Uh, right now, Jimmy and Carrie, they're going to work their magic. They're going to discuss the numbers. They've got like this sheet, and there's this. this there's a code, and there's a form, and they're going to tell me who wins. There will be arm wrestling involved. They're going to tell so, me who wins. That's the most important yes. thing. So we're going to we're going to give thanks. Yeah, we're going to give thanks. That's thank. exactly right. I'd like to thank Bill Ratner. He's our announcer. Bill Ratner. He just went to the bathroom, ladies and gentlemen. I swear to God, I say to myself, Bill Ratner. Here is this guy, a professional voiceover guy, and I ask him to do this for me, and he does. And so it's not like Bill just does the announcement for me, and then that's it. It's like he does the announcement, and then I use it. I've used it like ninety-five times. So I appreciate that so much. You know what I'm saying? He's got the deep voice like this. He's got a great voice. He's got a voice like this. I'd also like like to thank uh, Randy Ballas. Randy Ballas is here. Randy Ballas taking taking photos photos tonight. He's a good photographer. Randy Ballas. He's also single, ladies and gentlemen. He's single. Yes, Randy is available. And he will take photos of you if that's how far you want your relationship to go. You can take photos of him. He will set up automatically to take right. photos of the both of you. Now, Hannes, here's something that the folks can do for us. Okay, there's a couple of things, you know, to support this show. A podcast don't make money. Did you know that? <laughs> we are shockingly aware of the lack of money generated but by podcasting. one thing that happens is we do have a sponsor, and it's Amazon.com. And I use that all the time. Do you use yes, Amazon.com? Yes, yes. Everybody loves the Amazon.com. It's so easy to use that site, man. They have so, freaking everything. So just go to our website, storywithapodcast.com. Click on the Amazon banner. That's all you have to do. Then it takes you to Amazon. You shop right. normally. We get you see, a couple of You see, you guys, I know. Mark Marin does Amazon. Adam Carolla does Amazon. I get it. Do you fucking think those guys need the money? No. Yeah. I need the money. They're so, somewhere please. on a pile of cash. Story worthy. Having sex with Raquel Welsh. Fucking a Welch. model. Raquel Welsh. Hannes, <laughs> how old are you? I'm 156 years old. Uh, we'd also like to thank uh, John Thomas Griffith. John Thomas Griffith, he wrote the theme song to Story Worthy and also Shotgun Story Worthy. And he's out there touring with Cowboy Mouth all the time. Are you familiar with Cowboy uh, Mouth? Never heard of him, never heard of Cowboy Mouth. Don't know what Shotgun Story Worthy is. He's a rock and roll singer. That's what he is. Uh, I'd also like to thank Sherry Lewandowski. Sherry, where's Lewandowski. Sherry? Lewandowski. Lewandowski, okay. Don't fine. get me in trouble. Giraffe. Lewandowski. She will someday be my wife. That's right. Someday. But why rush it, Hannes? I mean, honestly. Because at this point, you're getting the whole thing. You're getting the milk and the thing and the thing, and it's all coming to you. Wow, wow. I'm just saying. Am that I right? That is crude, crude. Why that is not married? anything that I would ever say. Uh, yeah, right. Uh, and don't never. forget, folks, the Story Worthy Podcast is brand new every Monday. So this show will be up Monday, uh, coming up here the 16th or 15th or 15th, whatever it is. And perhaps our most important thank you. Jorge Reyes. Oh, Jorge Reyes, our sound engineer. Jorge is now the sound engineer for about six or seven podcasts in Los Angeles. He's like the go-to podcast guy in Los Angeles. God bless you, Jorge Reyes. Um, Okay, do we have a winner or what? All right. And where's the money, Hannes? Have we decided? I don't... uh, Where's the money? Where is the money? Does does Sherry... I, never do I have the money, Hannes. Oh, Remember, it's all money. part of the funny. Oh, the right. Sorry, always sorry, here. sorry. See? It's all, all part of the funny. The money is in funny. your bra, ladies and gentlemen. $100. I'll go down and I'll see what's going on. 
It's a sports bra. Just throwing that out there. Wait, what is? Why are you leaving the fucking stage, man? They'll bring it up. Don't leave okay, me. Okay, they'll bring it up. Okay. Do you see this, you guys? He's leaving me. I mean, we'll I, know, edit all I this can out, handle it. I can handle it, but I don't really want you to this go. This is why there's no money in podcasting. And remember, People the winner gets $100 leave. and a copy of Halloween Party. Look at the music's that. really good. It is very good, as a matter Remember of fact. at the screening, the guy that did the theme song for Halloween Party was at the screening, and he was just so hot and so rapish. That, that part did the, oh, I caught me that part. Hotness. Oh, I caught that part. No doubt about it. Well, Carrie usually... and Jimmy, do you have a winner? All right, they're coming they're up. They're bringing, they're bringing the forth the winner. Gentlemen. Do da, I get da, da, to read it? Do I get building. to read it, Hannes? You do get to read it, but I will... And come uh, on up to the stage and uh, please collect your winnings. And we do appreciate you guys all coming out again Armstrong tonight for Shotgun Storyworthy. Remember, please, if you can, paper. go over to iTunes what? and give... You to yeah, you can. Oh, Carrie is going to announce it, ladies and, and gentlemen. Bro, before you announce this, hey, you guys, before the winner... Before the winner is announced, you need calm to, down, people. Calm down. You need to go over to the iTunes. You familiar with the iTunes? Small I, big T, U N E S, and you give us Storyworthy a good review. Reviews are tough. Am I right, Hannes? They are tough, ladies and gentlemen. Holy shit, they can be hard. They do. So why don't you give us five stars and give us a nice rating, and I'll love you forever. All right, guys, we're recording again. If you could all just calm down for two minutes. Calm down, guys. Here comes the winner. Quiet, 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 thank, okay, thank, Carrie thank you. Armstrong, would you like to give us any background about your choice? Well, go ahead. We thought there were a lot of good stories tonight, and we, um, we had it was tight between three, but then there was one that we were like, this is the clear winner because it was very on topic. Um, the storyteller had was very dynamic, and um, you know, it had a clear beginning, middle, and end. So, so that, that and we she were knows, like, you, ladies and gentlemen, Carrie Armstrong knows. Producer, I totally and that, know. And- I just want to say, too, we liked our audience um, storyteller. You didn't win. I'm going to tell you that. Because you, you were far over your minute 32, but that was an amazing story. Jackie, so yeah, Jackie and Marriott. Marriott. That was a lovely story. That Thank you, Jackie. Story. Right out you of the blue. You would have been a closer contender if you had been closer to the one-minute mark. So Fair anyways. enough. Uh, okay, so our winner was uh, Wendy Wilkins. Wendy, Wendy Wilkins, Wilkins, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you, Carrie. Wendy Wilkins, ladies and gentlemen. Coming up to the stage. Here comes the theme song for Shotgun Story Worthy. Yay! $100! Yeah, Wendy Wilkins, ladies and gentlemen. She's rubbing it on her genitals. <laughs> she is rubbing it on her genitals and her breasts. I'm not making it up. Oh Don't blame me. Oh, my gosh. Thanks, Brian. All right, you guys. I'd like to say thank you to everybody who came out tonight. We really appreciate it. Uh, hopefully we'll be here next month as well and I'd like to thank all of the storytellers who participated tonight and of course Jorge Reyes our sound engineer Bill Ratner our announcer and on behalf of Hannes Finney my very dear friend my name is Christine Blackburn saying make it a story worthy week thanks for being a part of Shotgun Story Worthy this show will be up as a podcast this Monday April 16th Don't forget to subscribe to Storyworthy on iTunes. And a special thanks to those listeners who take the time to comment on iTunes. Good night, everybody! If you like listening to comedy, try watching it on the internet. The folks behind the Sideshow Network have launched a new YouTube channel called Wait For It. It's got interviews with comedians like Reggie Watts, Todd Glass, Liza Schleichinger, Schleichinger. I've been friends with her for 10 years. One of the funniest people out there, and I still have a hard time with the last name, Liza. Our very own Owen Benjamin, that's me, takes you on a musical journey down internet rabbit holes and much more. You don't have to wait any longer. Just go to youtube.com slash wait for it comedy. There's no need to wait for it anymore. Because it's here. And it's funny. And I love you. A few days ago, Brooke Tudin posted an inspirational quote on her wall that got 17 likes and three comments. Thumbs up, Brooke. Geico also wants to make a comment. In just 15 minutes, you could save hundreds of dollars on your car insurance by switching to Geico. And nothing says inspiration better than saving money. Well, except for those posters that say things like teamwork, excellence, and make it happen. Hashtag keep climbing. Hashtag savings. Geico. 15 minutes could save you 15% or more on car insurance.
Message. What up, what up? It's Heather's cousin. You dated her in college, or maybe you were just in the same class. Anyway, I heard you bought a boat, my man. Let's hit the water. Oh, and Heather told me you always liked, uh, snacks and stuff, so I could totally bring some chips. When you get a boat, you also get new friends. Make sure Progressive's one of them, and get coverage today for as little as $100 a year. Hey, also, I'm a little short on cash, so can you cover the chips? Thanks. I can see why Heather liked you. Progressive Casualty Insurance Company and Affiliates Annual Premium for Basic Liability Policy not available in all states. Membership fees apply after free trial. Cancel any time. Hi, it's Carl Deichler, CEO of Beachbody, and I'm giving away 10,000 free memberships a week to try our amazing Beachbody fitness and nutrition programs. Pick any program and just follow it step by step, like our 21-day fix program or the ab shredding muscle burns fat program. Plus, there's free support in personalized fitness groups with our community of over 2 million members. Now is the time, so don't wait. Go to Beachbody.com to claim your free membership and start feeling great.